Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, no, you know my dad walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, threads, everything, including Facebook and YouTube. But YouTube is only for if you want to see our visuals, you definitely got to go check us out on YouTube. But don't only subscribe. We want you to go ahead and purchase a membership. A lot of y'all see us on the streets and be like, man, we love what you do. How can we support you? That is exactly how you can support us. But how you find our membership under every video that we have, including this one below, click on the description section and you'll see a link to join our membership. Follow the instructions and you're set to go. But thank you in advance and we love you. Man, hey guys, man, we got a treat for you today. Um, this guy right here, he really don't need no introduction, you know, because he's been on the show before. This guy right here, a man, been supporting me. Uh, we even went down to Little Rock. That that interview never did come out. You know what I'm saying? But we did it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> man, but this guy right here, man, got a lot of jewels, and I'm pretty sure you guys are about to learn a lot from C. James is in the building. What's going on, man? What it do? What it do? How you doing, man? I'm blessed and highly favored, man. Man, you are, man. I, I first of all, I want to say, man, we we went and we ate together today, man, and we sup. You know how you, we sup together. Five. You know what I'm saying? Five. Shout out to uh, Jenga Derrick's, man. Uh, Jenga Derrick's, man, over at that uh, Ghost Kitchen, right? Real authentic. Hey. Really? Jamaican food. Oh man, was it good though. It, was, it was good, man. I was I was talking early. Next thing you know, I was like, "Yeah, I'm on 19." <laughs> I'm like, "Where they come from?" <laughs> I, turned, I turned to a Jamaican for a second, man. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's doing good. He's, he's, doing, good. he's doing good. Not the best, but he's doing good. Okay, you just gotta keep up the practice. He, he gotta keep practicing, <laughs> man. <laughs> but what, but I remember I remember a statement that said it was even better than somebody else's jerk chicken. Oh yeah, yeah. Somebody did say that about my jerk chicken. I, it was, it was, it was, it was good. It was authentic. I'm, I'm not, but I, I think I'm from the islands, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> man, so like, man, you know, last time you came on here, you had the movie, man. Uh, what did it say? Let nice guys finish last. Mm -hmm. Like, that, is it. that was the that was the movie that I, that first, you know, kind of drew me to you. Like, let's talk about that for a second. Like, you took that movie, you independently, uh, uh, you know, built that movie up. You went and you you went and got your own uh, editing. You did your own casting call. You you pretty much wrote your own uh, uh, what do they call it Skip, uh, script script yeah you you did everything on your own man if you had it to do all over again would you change the thing man honestly I would not um, I took myself to film school that was the best lesson I ever learned and and now that I see how the game works it's lovely man and I, I was able to kind of sit back and watch guys like Tyler Perry and appreciate what they do. And now I see how and why he operates the way he operates. He said from the beginning, don't sell your product. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't sell your product. And and I came into the game with that mindset because I heard what he said. So it's guys like him that gave me the game. I took it, developed it, learned it, went away, went my own route. Cause you can't, you can try to follow other people's route, but you know, I went my own route. So, and I, when I talked to other creators, I tell them, let's look at like uh, Marlon Wayans and, and his family. They create a scary movie, right? They don't own the rights to that. Mm. Oh. If they wanted to go make another scary movie, they can't use none of the characters in that movie. They can't. They can't use nothing affiliated with that movie. They can't so do. So they another. created the movie. They created. It. They came up with the idea. They came up with the name. They wrote the script. They shot it. They produced it. But they but don't. Somebody else put a budget and everything behind it. So no, they, they ended up. Yes, they probably did have that. They they probably did have that. But you don't necessarily have to sell your rights over to the person that financed the movie. But that's what basically what they did. They sold but it to that. They've been in business so long. So why would they get caught up in that? So just like the rap gang, you know, every time an artist gets signed, they see, you know, years down the line, they be like, oh, everybody get what on their first deal. Mm -hmm. So that was part of the game back then. Cube, he owns Friday. Well, yeah. he used to own Friday. He doesn't own Friday. Uh -oh. That's why we cannot get another he Friday. He sold it? He sold it. So, why would he do that? Well, when he, Paramount, not Paramount, but New Line Cinema owns that, that project. When y'all see Friday, it comes on New Line Cinema. 
That's the reason why he cannot do another Friday. He has to get permission to, to do that movie because he does not own the rights. But he he own, he used to own it. So he, he came to, up with the idea and created. Oh, so he it. never really owned it. He never owned it because oh. New Line Cinema bought it for him. So, so but they that, have to agree for him to even make a new Friday. Yes, that's why he cannot. So do people that. that keep asking the question, when is the Friday gonna come out, Cube? When are you gonna do another one? It's something that he has to. It has to be strategically done. And not saying they wouldn't do it with him because right. he is Ice Cube and he right. does a lot. But he would really have to go in and convince them to be able to do another one. Correct. Oh. He, he needs to come out with another one called Saturday in the Six. <laughs> so <laughs> he, he can do that, but he still can't use any of the same characters' names because though that that name, image, and likeliness uh, belongs to New Nine. So you Cinema. can't even do it like that. Just change like a letter and this. He, he he can't base nothing off of the storyline, the characters, nothing because mm-hmm. they'll come back and sue for wow. something he created. So mm-hmm. that's that's where. Again, yeah. I know the game. I own the rights to Nice Guys Finish Last. It's my movie. Mm-hmm. And when it get ready to, to come out, or when it when it did come out, like I say, the only person that receives the checks for it is me. So if somebody come out with a big enough bag and say, I want to buy this, you tell me you wouldn't give in? Yeah, I probably would. <laughs> <laughs> See? Just like everybody else. So well, you know. But this is my first one too though. So I already know that bag gonna be big enough yeah. to where I can. And when do he did Friday, that was yeah. back in the day. It was. So, you know, he didn't it know was. it was gonna be as big as what it ended up being. True. True. I mean, just think about like uh coining the phrase if he could have just copyrighted by Felicia. Mm-hmm. They got wow. a whole show named after that. Mm-hmm. Wow. And who use it more than black people, white people? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. use by Felicia way more than us. By Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> Just think if he, did, you know, got that. Like, I mean, as much as they don't like to admit, we are pop culture. Mm-hmm. How hard was it trying to distribute that movie, uh, coming from an independent angle like you did? You know what, bro? And that I'm, I'm about to give y'all some real game. So. When I came up with the idea that I was going to shoot my own movie, I didn't even know how I was going to finance it, but I knew I was going to get it done somehow. I was like, if I could just get about this amount. COVID hit, some funds came through. I was able to kind of use that. I picked up a second job, used that, put that towards it. And I was like, I, right. I wasn't expecting to pay this much money for it, so I can't just put it out there on the internet for free. So I was like, I, right, I know I can get it on on Prime Video or Tubi. I know I can get it on there. I just got to figure out who I got to contact and talk to. When you put that out there, it come to you. Somebody reached out to me. It was like, hey man, I think I can get your movie on here. By the time they reached out to me though, I had already been doing some networking. Now check this out right here. Again, what you put out when you do good work and you meet good people and you do good things, it come back to you. I went to a movie premiere. Shout out to my big bro, Lazarell Lee Song. Okay. Um, good brother, man. He's a film, he's a writer, director, and producer. Um, he just did a movie called um, Christmas Angel starring Lil Romeo and uh, Danny Lay. Okay. Um, they just did a premiere. I did the Q&A for him. But he recognized who I am from social media. That's mm-hmm. why you should be posting. No matter how many followers you get, you just never know who watching, who see, who see you. So he saw me and recognized me at his movie premiere. And he was like, hey, man, I see what you're doing. He was like, you're the type of person that I would bring under my wing. So he was like, what are you planning on doing for distribution? And I was like, ah, that's, that's kind of what I'm working on. He was like, well, I tell you what, this is what I do. I, I'll put you in contact with some people and I'll help you get distribution. I'm like, I bet. Do y'all realize this dude took my movie, my little old movie with no big stars, Put it on BET's desk. Oh. So when we was here, we y'all didn't we we no, had I didn't, didn't have none of that. that right. I didn't have none of that, right? I had no idea. So for this, this might be my first film. It made it to BET. Wow. wow. So with it being a first film, no big stars, no big names in it, right? I'm the star in it. I'm also starring in it. Right. For it to make it that far, that's that's good. You know, mm-hmm. I can say that. But not only that. We all know trash when we see it, right? Mm-hmm. If if it comes through the door, they'll look at it like, nope. Immediately, almost immediately, they throw it right out the window. They sat on it for like about two, two and a half months. Wow. So I'm like, oh, he was anymore. probably worried the whole time. So, and he, he texted me, he was like, so 
what numbers are you thinking? He was like, uh, would you accept? So I'm like, man, I, I don't know. This is my first one. He was like, I think you, he was like, I think uh, about 280 should be good for you. And then I was like, okay, bet. He was like, we'll start out with that in about then. He was like, we might can negotiate up to about 350. Yeah, so because like, you know how much you put into it and you know how yeah. much you had to pay everybody and stuff like that. Right. Right. So he was like, I think we give about 350 for it. So I was like, I don't know. We'll see. So he was like, well, they got it. They sitting on it. He was like, uh, with it being the uh, the end of the year, you know, they kind of coming back into the office and they looking at stuff. Ultimately, they decided to pass on it because um, they decided they were looking for something with more women leads. And if y'all notice, which makes sense. Just about everything that comes out is they they're catering to women, so y'all know the industry they they follow trends. So I was like, ah, that makes sense. So they decided to pass on it, but I'm like, those numbers was talk, that they was talking was good. So after after I realized what I had and then it was something, and I was like, um, if this guy recognized my work and he's in the industry, just what he does for a living, he said it was good enough to. This is quote he said, I've seen them pick up worse projects with big names in it. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'm like, well, bet, like I got something. So I didn't get that deal done, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna reach back out to the person that said they can get it on Tubi. And I knew if it was good enough to be, to make it to the desk there, I would get it on Tubi. Sure enough, the guy came back, he sent over the contract, negotiated a little uh, price uh, split with him. Next thing you know, it's on Tubi and it's been on there doing numbers. Um, I get a quarterly check every year. So those of you who don't believe in Tubi, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I mean, not every year. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Every, minute, wait a minute. every month, every year. When quarterly, do you get this? Quarterly. quarterly check. You get a quarterly check from every Tubi. quarter. I get a check from Tubi. Well, let me just say this, and I I, I talked to Faison Love, and Faison Love just I, just was on the show, and he said, you know, let me show you what a Tubi movie does, and he started to make an analogy on these Tubi movies, and it was so hilarious, and <laughs> and he's been in about ninety some movies, to be honest with uh -huh. you, and. He says that, you know, actually he said he was too good for Tubi, you know, I am, you know, and, and basically um, the bigger, you know, actors, um, some of them, uh -huh. now you got to realize, now I did do uh, Jamal Woolard and Jamal Woolard is always on Tubi, Tubi King. and he, you know, yeah. but at the end of the day, that's still not a level of the phase on movies, you know, yeah. Couples Retreat and all these other great Elf, the Elf, you know, you can see that one come across in a minute. Yeah. Like, so he he kind of chides back from Tubi. You know what I mean? So is it a place where it's an entry level position or, or what? Honestly, I think he's speaking from a place of ignorance. Whoa. Why do you think that? Um, first of all, Tubi is owned by Fox. I told him that. Second of all, there are, I'm pretty sure multiple of his movies are on Tubi right now as we speak. <laughs> oh, okay. okay I <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I, we can go on uh, Tubi and pull up some of his movies because I'm, um, I'm pretty sure some of the movies that I've seen on there are like a lot of Adam Sandler movies and stuff like that. On Tubi now. On Tubi now. Because okay, it never used to be because I honestly, I stopped watching after I watched your show. I probably stopped watching Tubi because I was tired of going through, and this was probably the beginning of the year. Yeah. I was tired of going through Tubi looking for movies, and I, lo I don't like bootleg movies. Yeah. Looking movies. Your, quality, like the, is your good. quality is good. And I've had a, another guy who came in here and showed me his movie when it was about to come out, and his it was immaculate. And yeah. he, it was going on Tubi as well. Yeah. So I know there are some great quality movies on Tubi, but you just have to search for them. Well, you know what, and that's, you know, that's, you know, I have one regret that I say uh, about my movie being on Tubi. What? I wish I'd have made it worse. <laughs> so the <Why>? is. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd have at least had one, like a real bad hiccup or something, because those are the movies that go viral. Mm. And I, so every quarter, my distribution company sends me a quarterly uh, receipt of what I earn, what my movie earn. And those are the people that are signed with this distribution company. I get to see their movies and what they did too. Mm. And it's some money. And when you went out there and watched their movie, you, you know, it's it like, wasn't, uh, I, I feel like mine was just, just as better. good, better quality, better acting, um, better talent, mm -hmm. better storylines for some of them. But 
again, is what you what you 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 market. Some of them have a team. Um, shout out to Devin Bray. That's somebody you need to talk to. So y'all, I don't know if y'all remember the PPP Long Gone yeah, Wrong uh-huh. movie. That movie did some real numbers. Wow. But he has his whole family, kind of like what you guys got mm-hmm. going on. He got his daughter, his son, his wife. All of them are working with them. They all got they they created the uh, Tubi Movie Group. They got over four hundred thousand subscribers, man. Wow. So they they are the the, the marker, man. They're independent. They're a family, and they shoot movies. That wasn't their first first movie, but it was like their second or third. It took them a while to feel it, figure it out, but. What you put in, man, you get out. If you can get you a good team, especially got your family supporting, y'all create the group and going in, it's going to pay off. And I'm telling you, I I have seen their quarterly numbers versus mine. And it was like they are doing numbers. So put it like this, Faison. And, you know, not no. Well, I don't care. It is what it is. My cousin said, he said, man, forget what anybody else got to say about anything. He was like, until they write, direct, produce, and start their own movie, they can shut up. Wow. So he was like, it's niggas in Hollywood have been out there their whole life. Faison, I ain't seen you do that yet. I'm just saying. Yeah, I think he he, he got directors. uh, Yeah. But he wrote, direct, produced. He probably had, I don't know. I'm just saying. Do you know for a fact? I don't know. I'm going to have to see. I'm going to have to to ask you. I don't know. Because I'm I'm just saying, like, like, when you think about just the whole game, like, what kind of budget would you give a guy like a Faison or a so, uh, or, uh, 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 Tiffany Haddish or uh, um, who else? Uh, just Denzel. Kevin Hart, Denzel. Yeah. Like, you'd have to have a hell of a budget to get them in a movie that was going to pop on. It'll blow on Tubi for sure. For but facts. your money got to be right to get them type of caliber people in. I need to make it back. Well, see, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing, though. I, I feel like I know. he See, he going to get what I'm saying right here right, when I say it. I know for a fact that he can call in and say, hey, like he was talking about Cube, come on, man. You know how he, come on, man, come on, do it for me, man. He say Q paid him, what, 5000 to do uh, Friday? I, I ain't never know so how I'm, much he paid him. It's 5000 that's 5, what he said. 000. I done seen him on interviews, so I'm gonna tell you this right here. And that was a long time ago. It was, but I can, t- I can tell you this right here. For the most part, just about all these celebrities, um, if you get, 15, 20 bands, you can you can book them for a day or two to come in and shoot their scene and get on down. Okay. So that just, it just depends on you. You got to work that relationship. He got a relationship with these people. He ain't got to pay them that much. You know what I'm saying? So it just depends on who he is who he is in your relationship. He can shoot a nice movie for with a nice budget. And with that being said, when you wrote, produced, and starred in it, you're paying yourself for all those roles, right? You have the creative... Um, you own that content. You own those images, that name images, likeness. Let's say it gets on and do those numbers. Fox going, they not, so that's one thing about Hollywood. They not going to let you make too much money without them. They going to come a calling. So those quarterly checks that you, you collect in every quarter, every four months, they're going to be like, hey, look, we want to finance your next movie. He might say, well, I tell you what, I want to continue to own it. If we do that, we can negotiate where we split or something like that. But I want to own majority of it. Again, the reason why they're going on strike is because actors are struggling for work, right? They're not getting paid off those residuals. I, I promise you, most of those residual checks, like he said, he didn't talk about that. I don't watch it. Residuals. Yeah, that, that started on Boss Talk. He was talking about them residuals really wasn't much. It's, and you don't get residuals from internet, but I promise no, you. No, 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 no. He said the residuals he, get he gets from is Meg good. is good. He said that uh, the internet part of it is where they're struggling. Plus, they get insurance. They, they cover insurance, health, all SAG. that stuff. Right. So, SAG does That's it, right? Right. right. But, but, but do the, y'all get SAG? So no, I I'm not sad. I'm not okay. sad. But what I'm this is what I'm saying though. I get a when it's every time a person watch my movie, I get paid. Mm-hmm. If Faison was if he was just the face of a movie, people gonna watch it because it's Faison. Right. So this is what I'm saying. So the the way the algorithm work is is like it's called impressions. It's a little mm-hmm. bit different from YouTube. Y'all know, mm-hmm. y'all know. So as long as people are watching your movie, clicking on it. And watching it long enough just for an ad to pop up, which y'all know it's mm-hmm. a little bit different though. So uh, hopefully, SAG is re- they renegotiated the uh, contract to where they'll be a little bit more honest and show us exactly how we get paid. But 
as long as people are clicking on that movie and watching it for an ad to pop up, you finna get some money to come in. I think it's average about seven dollars and ninety seven cents per ad. Damn. But it depends on how many people watching too. But if so, you stay the whole movie, you get more ads and you get more money. And you get more money. And so it goes up because the higher the ads, they start seeing like, okay, um, Face on movie is doing numbers. The people who paid the most for the ads gonna start putting their movies on uh putting their ads on that movie. So that means the average pay gonna go up. So instead of us being seventy ninety five, it's gonna be fourteen ninety five. So if the more it go up, the higher the ads go. So I understand what you're saying, but it's definitely people on there making six figure checks every quarter, and I've seen it with my own eyes, and they didn't do nothing but give me more motivation to do it. So you're saying there's people on Tubi that's making six figures every quarter. Every quarter. <clears throat> every quarter. Okay. Every quarter. So this is what's making it harder right here. Y'all just pointed that out. So. Somebody like me who a little man, I'm the only one pushing my movie, right? I can't I can't compete with Big Daddy with Adam Sandler. Mm -hmm. I can't compete with Elf. Those movies are on Tubi. Mm. So those big movies are starting to figure out, oh, we can get some more money by putting it on Tubi. So that pushes us down. Now, it used to be, like you said, you just mm -hmm. said it, it used to be more independent and people was going on there watching it. We was getting the big bucks, but now it's pushing us down. So now we got to figure out another way to kind of compete, get the marketing. Now I got to build me a team kind of like Devin Bray and create some groups and all that type stuff. But I have seen literal six figure uh, numbers from with receipts showing what they've earned because they show everybody that's within my um, distribution company's numbers. Wow. So with the, um, the amount of money you spent for your movie, how long did it take you to recoup your funds? If you've recouped it already. I, I, I recouped my funds. First of all, when I did my first premiere, my first premiere, I sold it out in Little Rock. Um, I gained over half of that back just oh, okay. off the first premiere. Then my first two quarters, I gained it back. Okay. I, was, I, I was in the green. Okay. My first two quarters. Wow. Um, <clears throat> you did your casting call. I did. You just hypothetically ride with me for a minute. You mm -hmm. did your casting call. You had this young lady that helped you. Uh huh. You told me about her. Yes. Um, she helped you, and then I think you said Monica you know, Reed. Monica Reed. Uh huh. Uh, and there was a few more ladies. I seen the movie. It was nice. Yeah. Everybody was in there. The women and the men was having challenging moments. You yeah. know. But just hypothetically, you know, you did this, and say fifteen years later one of those girls come back and say that C. James, uh, you know, that she feel like she was uh, harassed in a way. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Uh, how do you defend that? You know, because I'm looking at a lot of cases coming up on different celebrities that they're, 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 there was a thing in New York where they had this deal, and they was basically trying to, these people are trying to defend things that happened years ago. And even Luke, Luke mentioned one, yeah. uh, and like there's a lot of them. Like, how do you guard yourself uh, uh, from something like this happening, being that you're in a business where you're dealing frequently with uh, females uh, uh, that come around you? Man, we're going to go and put it out there. We know who you're talking about, Diddy. Diddy's one of them. It's Diddy's a bunch one of them. It's, it's, it's Diddy. Who else Jamie was it? Fox. Jamie mm -hmm. Foxx. Who else? Uh, Marcellus Wiley. Marcellus Wiley. What's that pretty name? Leor Cohen. Leor Cohen. Mm -hmm. like, uh, like, how do you guard yourself in these situations? Because they're going to come for you if the opportunity presents itself and there was anything. I, I don't even cringe on old ex-girlfriends coming back. Hey, you know what? Uh, first and foremost, uh, we shot my movie in Arkansas, so that's, <laughs> the statues and limitations on that is is different than the state of New York. They, I think they probably one of the only states where you can go back that far. Well, New uh, York is. New York is. Second of all, um, I'm always a professional. Um, third of all, I always had witnesses with me um, that you weren't gonna catch me by myself. Um, if any of the ladies, if you notice, actually within the movie, it wasn't a lot of like touchy feely type stuff. I shot mine during COVID. I didn't know what you had. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to die. This was in the beginning of COVID. So I didn't know what, you know, when we first heard a person was gonna get COVID, we thought it was a turn to the zombies or something. So <laughs> I wasn't trying to kiss too many people, but 
Um, I, I made sure that I was going to be professional, not touch anybody. You know, I made them feel comfortable, anything like that. But the only way to protect yourself is to keep witnesses and to keep people around you. Um, don't be participating in any type of predatory behavior. Um, we know what's wrong for right. Um, the things that I hear, and I, I hate to hear this. I, I, I don't mind speaking on the Diddy situation. And just, just to throw this out here, too. Like Again, you just never know who's watching, right? My movie was actually being considered for... for um, for uh, Diddy's platform for uh, Revolt. Revolt. Revolt, Revolt. So you know he just stepped down. I I saw that. So um, with that being said, you know I could have actually been you know a partner or been working with him. That was actually the numbers we was looking at was around two hundred. Um, with that, so my the person who helped edit my movie has a relationship with them, and the VP of Revolt reached out to him, asked him what he had, and he saw my trailer. He was like, I like it. It was around this time. Unfortunately, it was the end of the quarter, and they had spent all the budget up for the quarter. That's that's probably other than that, my movie probably would have been on revolt. You know what I'm saying? But I hate that Diddy is in this type of situation. Um, then again, when you look at it, a lot of times I look at my boy Diddy man, and and I, if I feel like everybody that was around him feel like they don't really mess with him too much no more. Why? Mm. So. You know, we look at all the artists, all of them be like, nah, I don't really mess with Diddy no more. He screwed us over, he screwed us over, screwed us over. So I just be like, man, try to put out good energy, man. And and I understand you're supposed to read the contract. Again, that's why why I'm an MBA. I went to school. I try to make sure I read stuff um, and, and, and make sure I get the best deal out of, out of it. I know we all get screwed. And I don't want to work with anybody to uh, make it, to that, that feel like I screwed them over. Mm -hmm. So what I, even with this movie right here, Say if I be like boss talk, hey man, I'm I'm shooting a movie. You somebody now. This ain't four five years ago. You got a brand, you got a name, right? You might be like, hey man, you got to pay me. I might be like, boss talk, man. I, I ain't got much, but I tell you what, I give you percentage of a movie every quarter. You know, I break you off some. How about that? That's kind of like points. Face I know about some stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's stuff like that that like every quarter you 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 can own a percentage of it. So I even tried to do all that at the beginning. Nobody believed it. And guess who the only one collecting the check at the end of the quarter right here? You. Though. You. But nobody believed Everything me though. Everything happens for a reason. Everything happened for a reason. I put in the work. I tried to, I promise you, every step of the way. Y'all remember the story about the, the chicken where she was like, oh, y'all want to help me plant the grain? Nobody would help. Y'all want to help me grind it up? Nobody would help. Y'all want to help me uh, <laughs> uh, gather it and everything? Y'all want to help me cook it? Everybody smelled it cooking. And everybody wanted to eat with them, but then nobody wanted to help put in the work. So wow. I kind of feel like that, you know, with that. But it's all good, though. I know that you have to build a track and get it to run. And then, of course, people will have to uh, get on and, and want to ride with let, you. So let me ask you this, man. Um, you a parent. You a father. Yes. How, how many kids you got? I got two. Two. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and they get, you know, they're going to grow up, you yeah. know. Um, I've been watching things lately, man, and I've seen where. T.I. T.I. had an issue with 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 with, with King. Uh, King. Uh, I don't. I didn't see the. I heard the scuff. You can't handle me, boy. You can't yeah. handle me. You know, it was over there. Like it was going in. Like and this it, being a parent dealing with a child who's grown up now because he's he's of age. I think he's probably nineteen twenty now. Mm, about yeah, twenty. Yeah. So like to see this unfold like it did. You know, we love T.I. family. Oh, also, I love going you know, in like, like stuff like so, this. So like I'm we just saw trying him to grow up. Yeah, we seen them kids grow up on camera. Actually, you know, that go T.I. with my kids and they eighteen now. Yeah. So you know, and, and, and my daughter's eighteen, but on that picture, she probably was about seven uh, when she took that picture with T.I. But like. What do you think when you see T.I. and his kids scuffling on there like that? Man, I could go so many ways with this. Uh, I'm, I love talking about stuff like this. So I, I'm, I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas. I don't know if y'all know that. Um, shout out to Little Rock, Arkansas, shout out Little baby. Rock. So we we kind of known for the wrong things. Right. <laughs> Little Rock, Arkansas, hell, they, I, I know y'all from banging down there. It was the bang. wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong thing. So uh, with that being said, I grew up, I, I grew up during that era. And uh, I, I think I texted you and told you one of my buddies was uh, just saying he watched my old boss talk. Yeah, 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 you did. And he was talking about, man, I'm so proud of you. 
He was like, man, I didn't know you had that many degrees. He was like, yeah, you like you really came up from nothing. Mm -hmm. These are he he one of our buddies just passed away um, last week. We buried him Sunday. Wow, he's one of my that. my buddies that raised me uh, in the hood. But um, R.I.P. to Sean McKeever. But he uh, he actually taught me a lot. You know, took me up under his wing. But they didn't realize how young I was out there with them. So he's 10 years older than me. And I think the guy who just texted me, he's 14 years uh, older wow. than me. So he was like, hold on. You 37? So he was like, you weren't even 10 years old. He was out to me. Like, I was like, like, you was out there with us in the streets. You're like, out there with us. So I got to see a lot at a real young age. And it'd be funny, though, like when I see people like King. And I'm like, nigga, I was outside. You wasn't. Or you had to go in when the street lights came on, like you went off the porch. You remember I, I talked about being off the porch? Yeah, I, yeah. I literally meant being off the porch. And one of my other homies, he saw the Boss Talk interview. He was like, look, that my everybody that know me from the hood, they call me Sidgy. He was like, look, Sidgy, he was like, off the porch. He was like, you wasn't even on the porch. He was like, we get off the bus, you was standing in the curb waiting on that. <laughs> he was like, you wasn't on the porch. <laughs> so, But I get I, it's funny, though, because I, I, I got to see a lot of cats I grew up with that I knew really went went about their life and turned out to be like King. And I'm like, bro, you ain't you didn't have you didn't have to make that choice. You come from a two parent home and y'all kinda talked about it early with the music. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like a lot of times I wouldn't say we glorify the 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 struggle or or the gangster rap uh lifestyle, but they they feel like I think some people are still trying to find themselves and King is one of those again he's he two parent home parents got money probably got whatever he wanted he had to have been disciplined to a certain point but not really um to a point to where he need, he he would be he should be more respectful to his parents and actually appreciate what they have done to him so it sounded like to me he complaining about going over to his mama house or grandmother house and being taken care of over there, as well as his parents being able to provide him money and all that. He never had to sleep with roaches and all that. They talking about what they went through to help raise him. I don't know if he up being unappreciative right now, but man, straighten up. Don't don't try to be a part of the struggle when you didn't have to be, if that makes sense. But do you blame somewhere along the line, King feel like it's okay to disrespect publicly, publicly his father? How did that that don't just that don't just happen? No, nah, it don't. For me being being a person who have kids, my kids right now, like my grandmama taught me something. She said if you play with a puppy, he'll lick you in the mouth. Yeah. And if you play with a child, he'll show sass, sass you out. out. You know what? Yeah. That, <laughs> that that remind me so Hold I, on, hold I, on, hold on. Go my ahead. grandmama also told me, she say, son. You go out there and you can take that twig and you can bend it any way you want to. But when it become a tree, you can't do nothing with it. Mm. You're <laughs> mm. so, uh, grandma was so, preaching. That's real. That's so, real. So what I'm saying is, but this is do, not you, the first do time. you think that this is something that you you when you when you train a child up the word of God say in the way that they it should go they won't depart from right they won't depart when you see this thing happening to go straight to King I don't think it's fair no it's not it's you see what right. I'm saying I don't right. think it's fair because King has been reared up a certain way yeah we didn't see everything on the family hustle facts we seen partial he mentioned that though. He previews. said that yeah King said that we only see he said I really know yeah you know I know you. Yeah. So it was some things that they don't talk about, they don't share with us, and which yeah. is rightfully so. But he's still his father. Yeah. That part he can't never be wrong because he's still his father. Yeah. And he in the household with him, and mm -hmm. he reared him, he brought him up. He he's still there. Yeah. How many fathers not there anymore? Yeah, it's a lot, man. You see what I'm it's saying? Alive. But I can't just blame everything on King. This is a, I think this is a family hustle. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I, I, that's actually what I was getting at. You actually kind of pointed on that with um, it was a, it was a Instagram post that came up. It said a guy was saying how to raise your kids. It was like whatever you do, deliver what you say you gonna do. It was like that's how you raise a perfect kid. So don't tell them you are gonna do something and don't do it. 
I feel like it probably was a lot of that. You know, with them probably being on camera and being in public eye, at the same time, he going through court cases. He got locked up for a minute. He was he was gone. So we we got to put all in in effect. Like just because they got money and in, in, in the public eye, don't mean they're not going through stuff. A lot of us going through stuff because we they're human being just like everybody else. Yeah, they going exactly exactly. But I I feel like he he got some stuff. He probably mad at because he probably was on the road doing a lot. Like say he got locked up for a little bit. He couldn't probably discipline like him want like he wanted to because if the police get called out to the house one more time, he going to jail. He on probation. So you know people can be manipulative and 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 the family dynamics kind of play a a, a big factor in, in a lot of what we have going on. So I always that that actually reminds me uh, this right here too. I always tell people. Research your family history. So we don't know what type of background T.I. dad or mom or anybody come from. Some Any type of mental illness mm -hmm. or, or same thing with tiny, vice versa. So research. Do your family tree. Um, learn where you come from because it'll start to come out of your kids. The apple don't fall too far from the tree. So, and then you're already being, like you say, even though you, you take the... What they say, you, you you can take the nigga out the hood, but you can't take the hood out the nigga. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, That's right. So, you know what I'm saying? Or so not even just that. What a lot of parents always do and um, is, you know how you always tell your, your kids, don't do this, don't do that, but your kids see you doing the same thing that, yeah. and, you know, parents will be like, well, I'm grown. Yeah. But you telling them, so now that they're grown, what you going to do? They Again, the apple don't fall far from the tree. They see you doing mm -hmm. it. Actions speak loud in the words, so... Wow. You know, the thing I, I definitely, I, I just think about, you know, when you look at all the different things that go on, you you know, when you choose the lifestyle to be uh, rich and famous, yeah, you know, or one of these people that want to have all of these different things, you know, you put your family out there. I've done that in a sense with my wife and kids yeah. because of this show. Like, we was very private from early on, and I think that's one of the things you have to be very careful to know that you got to have, like my wife said earlier, when we wasn't on camera, some tough skin oh, yeah. to deal with this climate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, people seeing you, people recognizing you, people knowing who you are. Yeah. You know, um, this is something that these guys have been dealing with forever. So yeah. kudos to them, man. But when you see, um, like, you look at, uh, you listen to music a lot? Yeah. Um, I seen, uh, I think I seen, Slim Thug say, you know, that pretty much was saying, man, the black people that that's going on Vlad TV, uh -huh. you know, he quit. felt like they need to quit. And then some people you it, it crossed that over into saying he was saying that Boosie need to stop going on Vlad TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, some people say Boosie may make, make a lot of money over there on Vlad TV. Yeah. So, you know, uh, and I like I like seeing Boosie talk. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think Boosie's smart out of everybody. I think he knows how to handle himself on Vlad TV. I can say that. Like yeah. he's Vlad said some stuff that he didn't want to speak on. He knows how to turn that. Yeah. He's not somebody that he's smarter than he acts. Boost is a slick sucker. Yeah. See, he acts dumb or he acts crazy or he acts radical. But then he's smart. Behind behind the doors, he's not a lot of times he's a thinker. I've seen him get political on some shit. Oh, he's a thinker. After speaking so out on any, it. So yeah. anytime you can go and face a life sentence like he did and yeah. beat a life sentence like he did, come home and still be able to maintain business like he's doing, he's not a dummy. Mm -hmm. Independently doing most of the things, as you know, the movie he put out and all yeah. the stuff that he's done, the the uh, uh, bad, what, what was that thing called? Boosted bad, bad yeah. boosted gone, boosted gone, gone wild. Gone, no, gone bad. <laughs> or something. Uh, but yeah. but like he's done a lot of strategic things on his own dollar, on his own dime. Um, but at the end of the day, he goes and does the Vlad interviews. What yeah. do you think about that? Do you think that's something that he makes his his career look positive, or is it something that kind of overshadows him in 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 uh, a cloud of gloom? I think that Boosie. Um, has found his niche. Um, he's been a person that's faced life in prison, and he has said 
out his own mouth, I ain't missing no more money. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna get it all. He gonna get it all. He was like, I done been to jail and it dried up, but he was like, if a nigga wanna pay me to feature, I don't care what the song is, I'm, I'm hopping mm. on it, I ain't missing no more money. And he done, he done figured out his niche to make some another another dollar. And if you see him, he here, he here, he here, he here. Performing there, performing there. He going viral. The the boy, he's shooting movies. He He's like, hey, time is limited. I'm going to get it how I can. And I'm not knocking him on how he's getting his money. Um, so far, he, he seems like he know, how, know what to do to go viral here lately <laughs> and get people riled up. And I was actually questioning if, if he was actually doing this on purpose, which I think he may have been, uh, like, oh yeah, man, they copy my music. That make I people seen that. that make people go back and listen to his music. That make people go listen to their music. That's smart. It's a win win. Think about that. That's it's a win win. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they both come together and it was like, hey, bro, mention my stuff. Like I'm copying you. Like that's making but everybody music go up, making everybody music go up, making everybody algorithm peak. Yeah, he's he's definitely doing some things that I just basically. You never know in this internet world, bro. Yeah. You never know. It's things that happen that make people, people you think it's bad. It might be good. I'm just, Tiffany Haddish, I seen her on Holding Court. My boy Big Court had on there. Yeah. She was kicking it. Uh, they was talking. She was sitting back. She was kicking it. The next time I looked around, the next day, actually, after seeing that, TMZ showed that she uh, was drunk. And they DUI. called her at, at with a DUI sleep at the dang stoplight. Yeah. The These stop. people are human too, man. She yeah. had a hell of a hell of a party to be, <laughs> man. Well, and this is a like, second one. This is a second one. <laughs> like, what up. do you, you think the strike is affecting her, making her not be able to work, and it's it's, it's confusing in the situation? I know the strike. Now that's one thing for sure. The strike has affected everybody. Not, I guarantee you, Face on which he had a movie that was bringing in some money <laughs> doing that strike. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee. So, so, so what do you yeah. think? You think she just? You think it's because of her not having? The things you know what I mean. To, she has to keep her to keep her busy. She def well. She has said that all her money is dried up, and then the strike on top of that. You know they they basically blackballed her because of that that sexual assault incident. But what sexual assault incident? Well, not I wouldn't say assault, but um, what they say grooming incident where she and uh, uh, Ari Spears were doing a skit. That was uh, sexually seductive with kids. What? Yeah. Um, I they, ain't never hear about that. They canceled How her. How long ago was that? Uh, a couple years ago. Oh. They couple called years, her. They called her. They, well, they, it was a skit that it, that it went too far. and They I, didn't I, think anything of it. I, I, I know they, they didn't. They probably didn't expect it to, to do what it did. And they, they probably had good intentions. That was kind of making fun of making fun of pedophiles. Wow. So, um, I I know you know that that that's a touchy subject with that type of stuff. So they should have right. thought about that. Right. Um, but she kind of got canceled uh, before that, and then once the strike hit, that affected everybody. A lot, a lot of celebrities and stars are complaining about that. Like they, like Tyler Perry said, "All right, it's time to accept what they offering, so we can go back to work." Because as an actor, phase on, you don't know when your next job gonna come. <laughs> <laughs> but it could only strike for so long. You know they're not going to be striked for like years, two years. Yeah, it's not going to happen. But if you people got to eat, like you say, if you if nobody's filming anything and you're not writing and putting out your own projects, you're depending on somebody else to cash in the project. You ain't getting no money coming in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, so. I definitely understand that. Um, next movie, like what? What do you foresee? Uh, the next project being about like like or have you already wrote it out? I I, I have wrote. I'm writing. I'm writing on it some more. Um, it's a romantic drama, man. Um, I don't want to tell too much okay. on it. You love romance, don't you? Well, <laughs> I, I sometimes I just I just kind of sit back and think about some of the some of my favorite movies, and then I'm like, I would like to see, uh, try to recreate something like that okay. or similar to it. So I'll I'll study the uh, audience and see if I can try to. Uh, find my niche with, within an audience and market to that audience, mm -hmm. kind of like with, with Nice Guys Finish Last, which I must have been onto something with that, obviously, because I won some awards. Um, 
won Arkansas Times Filmmaker of Filmmaker the Year. I got uh, the Trailblazer Filmmaker uh, Award through the uh, Martin Luther King Commission. Man, congrats. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And I, I think I'm actually the first black person to ever win Arkansas Times Filmmaker of the Year, honestly. Wow. wow. Yeah. Um, I've gained some recognition from other celebrities. I ran into my boy Big Mike. He was mm. like, I know exactly what movie you're talking about. Really? I seen it on Tubi. He was like, I ain't watched it yet, but it was like, I know exactly. I seen the trailer. He said it looked good. It was like the quality and everything looked good. So cool. um Will Packer uh kind of heard about me, followed wow. me on Instagram, man. And like I say, people out here on the street, they may not say nothing. As long as the peers amongst me are giving me props, hey, I'm good. Doing your so job. I'm doing my job, man. So Man, I wanted to ask you something. Did you look at that? They quick AI. What do you think about AI? It, it, can, <laughs> it can create that's stuff hilarious. fast. You know what I'm saying? I saw that. Like, I was going to ask you, but I like, lost it. I was like, that's like, crazy. That can create you. Like AI is creating things. So it's like tonight at nine. You see how they're making it like it's a movie tonight yeah, at like, nine. Like, like, what do you think about AI and the process of people can take like a a, a documentary, right? Yeah. And and this is something I talked to Larry Hoover Jr. about last when I was up there because they're taking and making documentaries and they taking people lives and putting it out there and then they they over talk you know do a, 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 a what their voiceover yeah and they're and and it seems so real uh -huh. and, and and it's so real that. Because AI is so good, it can make anything sound so seamlessly mm -hmm. real. Bro. Yeah. So when you see that and you see how it's pushing our our algorithm, man, and, and does that concern you? Because it, it concerns me. Like, I've been looking at this like, damn, like, they can really take a movie almost and create it without the actors. Yeah. So that that it has its pros, it has its cons. Yeah. Um, just like with any and everything else, you got to do your research. Um, so you can actually get in and take advantage of what's going on and actually not get taken advantage of. Oh, yeah. So um, that's funny you asked that question. Um, I was on a panel um, a few months ago. It was me, Romeo Miller, and a few other people that's in the film industry back in Arkansas, and that question came up. And uh, Romeo and I spoke about it, and I, I talked about how you got to be careful um, and make sure you read the contracts and be careful about signing up on these different apps, utilizing your face to do these different uh, things, right? So, like, um, if there's an app, there was there was an app going around that was making people into um, the Hogwarts people or mm -hmm. different, mm -hmm. um, making them look old and young. Yeah. I remember if you, that. If you read some of the fine print, it says that they own the rights to your name, image, and likeliness. So they mm. can take that image and put it whatever and whatever what they want. Do. They want to put it on the porn video, which is easy to do. They can AI a porn video, your face on there. You can't do anything about it because you signed away your rights to it. People don't read those fine prints for anything. No, nah, they don't. But I'm just saying, so that, that's the type of stuff that's scary that's about crazy. it. That's crazy. That's scary. So like you say, they, they may take your image and then just put it on a random person. They making a movie. And doing, you're like, that's me. Like, that dude look just like me. <laughs> but, okay, mm -hmm. with that situation, that can also be sketchy because for people like us who are already in the limelight, so to say, mm -hmm. our picture's are already out there, somebody else can take our picture and put it on that app and do that. They can. We didn't per give the permission so we can go after them because yeah. we didn't do it you can so people are already using uh steve harvey voice to do stuff. you understand barack obama right. voice to do stuff, and they did not give them permission right. to do so these and with these new songs some people taking michael jackson voice and putting it on songs redoing songs in different ain't nothing they can do about voices. it so no, they can sue them. They can sue the whoever owns it. The state can sue. Yeah, but how? But because they didn't get permission. Like Michael Jackson voice is out there. I'm going to take Michael Jackson voice and put it on something. I yeah. sometimes don't agree with some of that because certain p tones is close to Michael Jackson. Sometimes I think Neo sound like Michael Jackson for some reason when he yeah. if you listen to him the and not see him. Yeah. yeah, like you can hear Michael Jackson in them because they probably like him so much, but I just don't I don't think it's fair a lot of time because you got some creative people out there that might not even like if you got a person playing a beat. Sometimes a beat sound like another beat and that person might have been creative to enough to make it yeah. and people be blaming it on that other beat like yeah. it's stuff like that it runs a it's a thin line that's all I'm saying I, I agree I it's agree it's a thin line your artistic great is minds like, think you, you might do something you yeah. might have not never even been thinking about somebody yeah. else and it'd be so close because it's just the the universe brought it together like that God let y'all think alike great minds think alike man and that's like you see what I'm saying yeah I agree with that too uh, but 
the way the world set up, it's money hungry. It's man. money. You you better have yeah. your stuff together, right? <laughs> you better have your stuff together. I always copyright and register your stuff, and and make sure you have your paperwork together. How long? I mean, how, how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? Um, you can find me on Instagram. That's S E James S E J A M E S S R C. What was the best movie that came out uh, uh, this 2023. year? Twenty twenty three. Yeah. Twenty twenty three. Yeah. You know, writer strike and all of that. Doesn't matter. Really. Doesn't I, matter. Somebody got to win. I'd probably say, and oh, I'm actually in a movie with him coming out soon. Um, I'd say Mission Impossible. Okay. Um, but I'm in a movie with uh, Isai Morales. Oh, I thought he was going to say um, with Tom Cruise. Well, I was like. Nah, it's, it's the Hispanic guy in the movie. He's the villain. Okay. So Isai Morales, uh, Terrence Howard, and. Um, Terrence Howard? Yeah, Alec Baldwin. So I'm in a movie with that. Wow. I got to ask you, but I'm glad you said that since yeah. y'all in a movie together, you and Terrence Howard. Let me talk about that before we. Hold on. We ain't going to stop it just yet. Hold on. <laughs> um, Terrence Howard is saying that he only got paid $12,000 yeah. for. It's you know it's hard out here for mm -hmm. a film. Yeah, when you're trying to you know. So that brings us back to what we were saying, SAG, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, the, he said that's the reason why they negotiating SAG is because they weren't paying much. Uh, you got to make sure you, you negotiate your contract right at the beginning. Like he said, he was trying to pay his rent. Um, that movie won all type of awards. They screwed him up behind him, then use his actual name for as uh, as the artist to, to rap those songs. That song was being playing all over. He ain't getting no publishing. He ain't getting no publishing. None well, of that. but I had a guy on here, shout out Mario Cannon, say that when he was on uh, uh, Empire with with Terrence, Terrence got him fired because he said I was making eighty dollars an episode and he was making eighty thousand, and he and he got me fired off the set. I was his double. And he says he don't know why he done it, but then you know he, he kind of feel like what goes around comes around. Are you are we sure? <laughs> that's his side, huh? Oh no, I'm just I saying heard, that's his heard, side. I, heard, I get the hear Terrence that's Howard's his side. It. That's his he side. Say he Terrence got Howard fired. is more than welcome to come and say his side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but Mario okay. was upset about that. If you go back and watch that episode, he's pretty. I'm gonna send it to you. So when you when you are extra. Uh, or a stand in, um, that's that's about the going rate between like 80 to 100 and maybe 200 dollars a day, yeah, yeah. Um, depending on what you're doing. Um, that's at the time when he shot that, I'm sure the SAG minimum was probably uh 150 a day. That's a day, you know, mm -hmm. for your whole day's work. So he might have been making that, but I don't know why with Terrence Howard head on another brother trying to do something or be somebody, he was making it sound like because. He, everybody was liking him, like on the set and everybody around. And I think and I so remember forth. seeing that. Right, okay. so everybody okay. was okay. like, like Terrence Howard. So everybody yeah. was liking like him, him, especially the females on he the set. He cut up, he like, he cut up. And Terrence didn't like that according to And he got to his man. He got, he got him man. bumped off of it, man. Hey, hey, he was cool when that's, I met him. Oh, that's your homeboy. I'm so you taking that for it? <laughs> He's a oh, that's what it is, baby. <laughs> that's his homeboy. He know he gonna see this, and they working together. Well, Mario Keller said he got him put bumped off. I need, I need you to talk to Terrence and tell him to come on Boss Talk One Hundred and One. Let's get to the bottom of it. Let's get his name resolved. Get it back in, cause you know. Terrence wasn't the first one to talk about him. Jamie Foxx talked about him too. Shout out to all you niggas, man. <laughs> Check it, man. Hey, man. Thank you for coming on, on the show, man. Yes, sir. We Appreciate love you, man, C. James. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out. <laughs>